ಸದಾಶಿವಸಂಭಾ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯಮಧ್ಯ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರುಪರಂಪರಾಹನಾವತು ಸಹನೌಭುನಕ್ತ ಸಹ ವೀರ್ಯಂಕರವಾವಹೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿನಧೀತಮಸ್ತು ಮಾವಿದ್ವಿಷಾವಹೈ ಈ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ತ್ರೈಲೋಕ್ಯನಾಥ ಹರಿ ವೀಡ್ಯ ಮುದಾರ ಸತ್ವ ಶಕ್ತೇಸ್ತನುಜತನಯ ಪರಮೇಷ್ಟಿಕಲ್ಪ ಜೀಮೂತ ಮುಕ್ತ ವಿಮಲಾಂಬರಚಾರುವರ್ಣ ವಾಸಿಷ್ಠಮುಗ್ರತಪಸ ಪ್ರಣತೋಸ್ಮಿ ನಿತ್ಯ ವಿವರ್ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಲುಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಟ್ ದಿ ಟೀಚಿಂಗ್ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಅಗೈನ್ ಟೀಚಸ್ ಅಸ್ the reality of oneself based on tattva masi the meaning of tattva masi itself was analyzed for more than 50 verses correct by giving all other possible meanings for the mahavakya and negating all the wrong interpretations and finally he summarized that in 107 this is the summary yataha eva mataha because of whatever discussions analysis we have done till now in this manner so what swasharira gatam <coughs> gatam aham iti avivekamatim sudridham pravihaya so whatever i sense we have on the body mind sense complex the identity which we are placing which itself is ಅವಿವೇಕಮತಿ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ನಾಟ್ ಬಾರ್ನ್ ಆಫ್ ಪ್ರಾಪರ್ ಅನಾಲಿಸಿಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಡೂಯಿಂಗ್ ಸಮ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕ್ರಿಮಿನೇಟರಿ ಅನಾಲಿಸಿಸ್ ಕರೆಕ್ಟ್ ವಿವೇಕ ಬುದ್ಧಿ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ನೋ ಬಡಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಟೇಕನ್ ದ ಟ್ರಬಲ್ ಟು ಅನಲೈಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಒನ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಇನ್ ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ ವಿ ಆಲ್ ಟೇಕ್ ಅವರ್ ಸೆಲ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಗ್ರಾಂಟೆಡ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಸೋ ಅನ್ ಸೋ and that so and so identity is based on one's body mind sense complex only so based on that people are living their lives even without seriously trying to understand that i what is that i who is that i who am i question in fact if some young person starts all this people think that that person has gone crazy actually so anyway <coughs> so the identity one places on one's own body mind sense complex is not really born of any analysis or anything it is just that it is the natural ignorance okay one has with reference to oneself and it is strong also it is a firm identity correct sudridham giving that up yad aksharam advayakam from avehi so now you know the yourself as this aksharam brahma which is advaya which is the jagat karanam and how tad aksharam atmataya avehi means you know that aksharam brahma as yourself that is the teaching that's what tatvamasi or any other mahavakya is teaching us in this manner only you have to know this like this this summary was given and then acharya immediately showed all these things this objective world can never be the subject correct i whatever i know <coughs> is not i that's all is the analysis we have to do vedanta is actually very simple whatever i know is not i whatever is an object of my knowledge is not i in that there is absolute clarity up to the point of our skin once it reaches the skin of your body confusion starts even though body also is an object of my knowledge i take the body which is an object as the subject as i that's where all the problem starts so acharya is showing through neti neti what is the what is the nature of this tvampada so this whatever we 
address as you or I, it is not the mind, okay? It is not the all the indriyas. It is not the body. It is not sattva, rajas, tamas, of which the entire world is, objective world is made up of, correct? It's all trigunatmika, we say. And also, the whole world is, physical world, We whatever we encounter is all five elemental. We have a five elemental model of creation. So, based on that, we say, it is neither rakasha, vayu, agni, apaha, prithivi, all that. So, this Atma itself is not connected to any of these things, all the five Mahabhutas elements and the elementals, which is this entire world. The entire objective world is nothing but made up of these five elements. So, this is shown in two verses, 108 and 109. So, we saw up to this 109, okay, that myself, I am not any of these things. Brahman also, in fact, is none of these things, really speaking. <laughs> and that's where the identity is. Brahman is Satyam Jnanam Anantam. Atma also is Satyam Jnanam Anantam. There is no other Jnanam, in fact. <laughs> Jnanam, there is only one Jnanam, one consciousness. Nobody can even objectify another consciousness. So that consciousness is myself, unconnected to the mind intellect, senses, body, etc. And in fact, to the entire world. All these things are jada. I am the one who is who is lighting it up. In fact, in Gita also, Bhagavan says that yata prakashayat yekaha krishnam lomam, uh, lokam imam ravihi. So there is only one sun <coughs> which lights up the entire world. In the 13th chapter, Bhagavan Starts with idam shariram kaunte yakshetra mitya bhidiyate. So, the, in fact, later on, Bhagavan shows Mahabhutan yahankaraha buddhiravyakta mevacha, like that. The entire srishti is kshetram, he calls It's a field. <coughs> and kshetragnyam, there is only one knower of the field. The entire world is a field, it is all jada, kshetra. And Kshetragnyam Chapi Maam Vidhi, he says, I am the one. Me, the Jagatkaranam Brahma, is the Kshetragnyam. So, Bhagavan divides the entire, <coughs> our entire Srishti into only two, subject and object. The entire objective world is Kshetram. And I am the Kshetragnyaha. And that Kshetragnya is only one. Even though you may see many sentient beings and all that, they are all only manifestation of that one consciousness alone. So, there is only one consciousness, like even there is only one sun which, which lights up the entire world, at least our solar system. Like that, <coughs> one has to know this, that I am only this, Conscious being, this limitless conscious being is myself. Everything else is only an appearance in me. Okay, Mayeva Sakalam Jatam, Mai Sarvam Pratishtitam. Like that Kaivalya Upanishad also says, Mai Sarvam Layam Yati, Tad Brahma Dvayam Asmi Aham. So these are all some things we have to understand. Very simple actually. <coughs> now, Acharya also takes us through the Avasthatraya Viveka to further make it easy for you to understand that I is not in any way connected to any of these objective things, the objective world. The objective world is there both in waking and dream. In dream, in fact, you have a certain... After you wake up, at least you have a certain viveka that the entire dream world is only an appearance in me, correct? Both the subject and object in dream were all imaginary. It's all only an appearance. But with reference to waking, that, that viveka doesn't come very easily. But even that also we have to understand. The waker, whom we take as some kind of a reality, <coughs> is not intrinsic to me. 
if it is intrinsic to me it is my very nature it should never go away from me correct right? if it is satyam whatever is satyam can never change can never go away but the waking self or the waker is there only in the waking state although the waking state may enjoy a certain continuity in comparison to dream even then when you are dreaming there is no waker there the waker is completely gone the dream and the dreamer the dream world and dreamer are different there the dreamer becomes the i in fact there also there is a adhyasa is there there is ignorance self ignorance continues in deep sleep there is no subject only atma is shining but there is nothing to be shined upon <laughs> there is no object which is lighted up but atma i am still there because i am the one who is in the sleep state like this you can see the three states analysis is a very powerful analysis where even the waker is not intrinsic to i i am the waker i am the dreamer i am the sleeper i is in and through all these states without i there is no waker without i there is no dreamer without i there is no sleeper i am the waker <coughs> i am the dreamer i am the sleeper i is anuvritti of i is there you can see i is there in all the states is all i i i in fact it can be extended even to your own regular life even within waking also i was the child i was the youth <coughs> now i am the adult correct dehi no asmin yatha dehe kaumaram yavvanam jara like that bhagavan also points out tatha dehantara prapti he says in fact the i i i i was the child i was the youth no i am the adult i is common but the childhood youthhood adulthood everything keeps on changing means that is all only with reference to the body understand that it has got nothing to do with i so the i alone is in and through all experiences all states the states themselves come and go in dream world or in dream there is no waking and the waker in deep sleep also there is no waker waking world dream dream world nothing is there but i am there always that means i am the waker but waker is not i is that clear this is the clarity you should have there is no waker without me but i am not the waker because waking comes and goes it's not intrinsic to me i am the dreamer but the dreamer and dream world are not i waker and waking world are not i in fact i am i am the sleeper but sleeper also is not i atma is always awake it is alupta drike it is called right the brudarnika very clearly says the drishtehe drashtaram it says the seer of sight for that consciousness vipari lopaha na vidyate avinashitvat like that the vakya is there it never stops because it is always of the nature of consciousness it's always shining correct so this consciousness alone is the reality it is the one which is lighting up all your experiences in fact that is the only i that is the real i whatever you think as i all that you have to give up it's all only wrong notion now for that this avasthatre viveka is a very powerful tool because from that you can understand that i is in and through all the states the states themselves come and go therefore any identity based on a particular state is not intrinsic to you so don't take your waking individuality very seriously understand that 
in fact the main thing you should understand being a student of vedanta is what your very individuality is mithya it is not intrinsic to you it comes and goes the individuality in the waking state you take it as the reality and suffer unnecessarily that individuality comes and goes it's not your intrinsic nature because in dream your individuality is different because in dream the body is different so the identity based on that dream body mind sense complex is different that individuality is different in deep sleep there is no individuality so to speak because since individuality is based on the body mind sense complex and body mind sense complex as a result in fact sleep is there only for the body mind sense complex understand that atma never sleeps atma is still the same conscious being which has nothing to light up because the mind has resolved therefore i can get up and say i did not know anything i slept well etc that is again only from the standpoint of the body mind sense complex atma is always as it is it is satyam jnanam anantam brahma aksharam advayam so this is what one has to understand so now let us see how acharya teaches us karanani hi yad vishaya abhimukam pragam pragam okay pragamaya pragamya it should be i think okay i mean there's a spelling mistake here pragam pragamya matir vishaye shucharet तदुजागरित प्रवदी बुध न तदस्तिमेतवगछदृशे सो कर्णा यदयाभिमुख प्रगम्य मतिर्षु चरे सो द कर्णा मीन आल द से आर्गन दो देंस आर्गन फाइव से आर्गन वी हेव and they are all always going after their sense objects correct the vishaya abhimukham pragamya so they go towards their sense objects and matir vishayeshu charet means what then it becomes an object of your mind also correct whatever <coughs> the senses contact so the contact between the sense organ and the sense object then results in that object becoming an object of your mind and then cognition also because whatever becomes an object is objectified in your mind it is lighted up by the consciousness and that's how knowledge takes place cognition takes place so matir vishayeshu charet so when this happens tadu jagaritam pravadanti budaha the knowledgeable people they call this when you are when your sense organs go out into this objective world and then objectify their own sense objects in the mind and due to that whatever cognition is taking place now the state in which this happens that is called jagaritam jagrat waking but <laughs> what do you have to understand natadasti mama iti avagachcha drishe but it is not it doesn't belong to you in fact mama it is not yours it is not i it is not yours also aham mama both this are only ignorance so it, it has got nothing to do with me in reality because i am only this conscious being the body mind sense complex is not really connected to me aham asangaha so this is what one has to understand even though the waking world is there and a waker as an experiencer is there there is an experienced world experiencer both these belong to only the objective world i am actually the conscious being in whose presence all these things are happening correct right? the working world the waker 
are all appearing only in me. I am the conscious being in whom all these things are appearing. In fact, it doesn't really change me in any way. I am as it as I am always. So it has so no natadasti mama, it is not yours, in fact. Iti avagacha drishehe. Mama drishehe. Here drishehe means Acharya uses this word drish uh, uh, drig consistently to point out to the conscious being. Okay. You are that conscious being, limitless conscious being, and none of this belongs to you. Both the subject object, they are in fact mutually dependent. And they depend on you for their very existence. But you are away from all that. They are only just an appearance in you. They do not change you in any way. So this is what one has to understand. Okay, that is about the waking world. Then what? The dream. Karanani yedo yedo paratani tada vishayanu bhavahita vasanaya Vishayena vina vishaya pratimam spuranam swapanam pravadanti buddhaha. Okay. Yada karanani uparatani. Karanani yado paratani tada. So when the, when the organs are all withdrawn, resolved into the mind, but mind itself is still active. Okay. There is no sense organ activity in dream. Sense organs do not go out and contact their sense objects. There is no contact like that. But mind alone is active. And mind <laughs> projects an entire space-time world. So, and how does it do? Vishayanubhava hita vasanaya means the dream world is nothing but it is a projection based on the impressions one has gained in waking. Of course, in dream world, you can see weird combination of things, but individually they are all experienced. You can say that I saw a rabbit having a horn. Okay, Shashavishanaha is a famous example we give. For something, it's an unholy compound, correct? For something which is not existent. But let us say one guy comes and says, he hears the guru talking about Shashavishana all the time. Then he sees a rabbit with horn in the dream. Then he can come and say, I saw Shashavishana in the dream. That is fine because <laughs> you are seeing a rabbit you have separately seen in waking Hans also we have seen on other animals. So it's not a big deal to connect the two and see it in your dream. But in dream, you only see whatever based on the impressions which you have gathered in the waking. So vishaya anubhava hita vasanaya. Anubhava hita. Anubhava hita vasanaya. So whatever vishaya anubhava you have already had that vasana, the impressions are all there. Correct? Samskaras, basically. So those samskaras are there based on that only whatever you have seen in the dream is there. Okay? And Then what? That cognition, whatever you are having in dream, it is there. Vishayena vina. Vishaya pratimam spuranam. Means you are cognizing something which doesn't have any real object <coughs> externally. There is no sense, sense object. But even without any external sense object, you are cognizing the vishayas based on only the vasana or samskara. In your mind, mind itself projects based on the vasana it has. And then you cognize that. And whatever you cognize then is called Swapanam Pravadanti Buddhaha. So 
to the intelligent people wise people call that as swapanam or swapnam dream pravadanti they call it dream so dream state again is entirely a projection of your mind the entire dream space time itself is just an appearance in you so this dream is a very powerful experience by which we know that any individuality i take up like the dream individuality even though it appeared very true very real while undergoing the dream experience it is not real so generally we have to extrapolate it to the waking also since there is some continuity in waking we think that it is all real but gaudapada acharya and all clearly says that there is no difference between dream and waking it is all the same because both dream and wake, uh, dreamer and waker and dream world and waking world everything is gone in deep sleep correct that means they are not intrinsic they are not there always understand that so that is the next one let us see karanasya dhiyas purane na vina vishaya kritike na tu ya sthitaya pravadanti shushupta mi amum hi budha vinivritta trisha shruti tatva vidaha so karanasya dhiyaha spurane na vina vishaya kritike na tu ya sthita sthitata so the karana there are no no there is no activity of the karanas okay and normally karanas when the sense organs are active they again objectify the sense object and make that into the object of your mind correct vishaya kritike vishaya kritika that's how acharya uses the word here vishaya vishayakara you can say vishayakarena vina so basically in deep sleep you are there but there is nothing there is no vishayakritika because there is no karana spurana also there is no activity of senses there is no activity of your mind also both are so dhiyaha spuranena vina vishayakritikena tu yasthitata whatever state in which there is no activity of sense organs there is no activity of mind also all of them have resolved you are alone there but there is nothing to know i am there but i do not know anything in fact i sleep well it's a very very desirable state so whatever problems one may have in waking once you are sleeping it is common whether the king is sleeping or a beggar is sleeping it doesn't matter the atma swarupa is one <laughs> you are the closest to your atma swarupa in deep sleep that way everybody in fact they all want to have good sleep so pooja samji used to say that nobody goes to the doctor saying i sleep well only if you don't get sleep then you have to go to the doctor and people take sleeping pill and what not in fact going to sleep is not a willful activity correct that's why in fact in the shastra interestingly how the they say is how do you even enter sleep that is only when you are waking karma is exhausted they say so that day's karma once it is gone <laughs> then you fall into sleep because there is no more waking karma to be exhausted for you in that day then you go into sleep and then if some other karma still you have to enjoy means that may come as a dream world so the waking and dream also whatever experiences you are going through it is all your own karma again okay so they relate they actually tie it with the karma only so even going to sleep it cannot be done willfully it is not a conscious activity you can make arrangements 
you can set up your bed set up your ac what not some people use one machine also nowadays which makes a certain noise they say that 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 noise actually drown, drowns out all other noises and it helps you to sleep and all that i went to us and in somebody's home they have that some machine is there which is making a very this kind of some noise it is making it <laughs> even without that noise i sleep well that's a different thing but so you can make all this preparations to sleep but still whether you sleep or not depends on your own karma only <laughs> some people take sleeping pill and still they cannot sleep it's so bad anyway so when you are mind and the sense organs everything has resolved okay without any there is no any vishaya to cognize there are no objects of your mind and you are still there as a conscious being that is called pravadanti shushup shushuptim amum that is what amum sthitim budaha pravadanti shushuptim so that is what is called shushupti by the wise people what kind of wise people in fact here acharya is using vinivritta trishaha and shruti tatva vidaha two adjectives why does he call them vinivritta trishaha means trishna means some longing attachment and all that correct or a thirst longing for something so when do we call it a longing longing is a more powerful word than like and all that correct attachment means you are desperate that if you think that without something i can never be happy that is a longing really correct that is trishna you are desperate but wise people do not have any longing for any of these objects in the world because they know that this world this external world and even the experiencer waker are all not really i correct if you are a wise person you don't you don't assign any reality to waker and the waking world dreamer and the dream world all these things so obviously you are not going to have any longing for anything which is there in this world it is all coming and going anyway it is not intrinsic to you it has got nothing to do with you really so those who know that wise people they are really vinivritta trishaha they don't have any longing for anything any thirst for anything because all these things are anitya they come and go it has got nothing to do with me in fact aham ananda swarupa they already know that i am the source of all happiness then what kind of trishna they can have for anything else whether something is there or not it is immaterial wise people are atman eva atmana tushtaha bhagavan says in gita correct one who is happy in himself by himself all that because i know that i am the source of all happiness there is no other source of happiness in fact so aham ananda swarupah knowing this means rasavarjam rasopyasya param drishtva nivartate like that bhagavan says in gita in the second chapter even though you may have some tendency some likes and all will be there personal any person personal likes are all there correct without that there is no personality <laughs> without that there is no individual so it may still be there but those are all not binding correct i like idli because that's what i have eaten as a south indian every day for breakfast but that doesn't make me that i have a trishna for idli or anything given a choice i will eat idli rather than bread in fact bread has a negative connotation for me because when we were young they'll give bread only if you are not well <laughs> bread is like in the north they give you kichdi rice if you are not well every day they eat wheat 
But if you are not well, they will give you rice. In South, every day we eat rice, idli, all these things, correct? <laughs> but if you are not well, they will give you bread. <laughs> anyway, so given an option, I will have idli rather than bread. But that does not make me into somebody who has a Trishna for idli or anything. So, okay, if it is available, we will take. So, the wise people, in fact, even as Mumukshus, they are all Yeshanatraya Rahitaha. They have to be. Yeshanatraya is talked about in the Brahadarnika, correct? Putraishana, Vitaishana, Lokeshana, like that. The, the three desires, three categories of desires. One is the desire for progeny. Another is desire for wealth, whether it is whether it is Manushi Vittam, Daivi Vittam and all we say. And location, going to some loka and enjoying and all that, Swarga. Most theologies are only tourism promotions, correct? So none of these things are there for these wise people. As a Mumukshu only, they have analyzed all these things. And they have Iha Mutra Artha Palabhoga Viragaha Vise, correct? They have dispassion towards all karma phala. Whether the karma phala is going to give you something here or something hereafter, one has to have a certain dispassion towards all that. One has to be objective. Any amount of karma phala which is finite is not going to make me totally satisfied. It will come to an end. Whatever starts will come to an end. And therefore, it is all anitya. I am not really interested in that. I am only interested in the limitless. And therefore, they are all vinivritta trishaha. But this vinivritta trishaha, how to become one who have, in whom there is no longing or whom the longing has been resolved, you can say. Vinivritta trishaha means. Means this avastatraya viveka also leads to that. That's why Acharya has put this vinivritta trishaha at the end of the avastatraya viveka. To show that if you understand all these avasthas do not belong to me, then none of the objects in the avastha also you are going to have any, any longings. Correct? And also Shruti Tattva Vidaha means one who has understood the Mahavakya, the Shruti Tattva, Tattva Masi. One who knows that I am Satyam Jnanam Anantam Brahma is myself, Aksharam Brahma is myself, Advayam Brahma is myself. I, as a conscious being, I have nothing to do with this appearance of this world. It is all only an appearance. It is all mithya. It is not real. So, these wise people, they they identify these three states for what they are really. They do not get entangled in them. <laughs> that is the important thing. So now that's what he says next. Iti jagaritam swapanam chadhiyaha kramato kramatascha shushuktam api nakadachida pitrayamasti mama ityava gachatadasmi turiyamiti Okay. So, in this manner, thus, this Jagaritam, Swapanam, Chadhyaya, Dhyaha, Kramataha, Akramatastha, Shushuttamapi. So, these three studs are only for the mind, the body-mind sense complex. Here, mind means we have to take the body-mind sense complex. The Atma is neither the waker, nor the dreamer, nor the sleeper. These are all only from the standpoint of the body-mind sense complex only. There is a waking state, dream state, sleep state. All the states, whether they are coming in certain sequence or not, continuity is there or not. Kramataha, akramatascha means, so there is, a, sometimes there, there is, generally we are waking, sleep, sometimes dream, or sometimes from waking to sleep, sleep to waking. But waking seems to have certain continuity. Whether there is some continuity or not. Okay. Whether there is a sequence or not. In whichever sequence these states are going, these are all only the states of mind. They are only states of your body-mind sense complex. It doesn't belong to me. 
kadachid api trayam asti mama it is all that got nothing to do with me i the atma atma is always the same conscious being which is lighting up all these states that is fine atma is the one which lights up both the waker and the waking world it is the one which lights up both the dreamer and the dream world it is the one which is still shining in sleep also but shining and but there is nothing to know so it is the only thing which is shining all the time and everything else shines after it correct natatra suryo bhatina chandra tarakam nema vidyuto bhanti kuto yam agni tameva bhanta manubhati sarvam tasya bhasa sarvam idam vibhati we chant that every day in the temple also during aarti so only the atma alone shines na na the sun the moon the fire whatever lightning you can take all sources of light they all do not really shine always only the atma alone is shining these things are all shining only after the atma if there is no atma if there is no consciousness none of them will become evident atma is the only self evident self existent reality and that is me and i have nothing to do with any of these states because they come and go they are not intrinsic to me they are all only appearances they are not satyam they are mithya the very fact that one state is replaced by another shows that these states and the experiencers of those states are also equally mithya so that you know na kadachid api trayam asti mama all these three are not there at any time kadachid api acharya says it is never there for me know that then who are you means aham asmi turiyam i am the fourth again the fourth gives lot of confusion to many people they think that then turiya is another state eh okay? turiya is not another state or anything turiya is just a name given to this atma with reference to the other three to to differentiate the atma from the waker dreamer and the sleeper we say atma is the fourth that's all but turiyam is really in and through all all the other three it is the very basis on which these appearances are happening so but you know yourself as something who is other than all these things but they are all not independent of you waker is i i am not waker dreamer is i i am not dreamer sleeper is i i am not sleeper this is the kind of knowledge you should have that i is the fourth okay in fact he will talk about that <laughs> because if you say atma is turiya then the dwaitin will come and say then what you say atma is nirvishesha nirguna but it has the guna of turiyatvam is there in atma they will say the fourth the quality of being the fourth is there in the atma you are saying atma doesn't have any quality but it has the quality of being the fourth they can say that so acharya is very aware of that so immediately in the next verse he talks about that let us see yadu jagarita prabriti मूढ़ीपल due to their deluded mind they are imagining these three states on themselves correct right? atmani parikalpitam these are all only wrong notions due to delusion you do this superimposition on yourself that i am the dreamer i am the sleeper i am the waker etc all these three states and the experiencers of those states are all imagined on oneself because of ignorance because of self ignorance mudha diya so the the abidana abidanam here is the turiyam the word the name fourth given to the atma is only with reference to the other three states correct tad apekshya abidanam idam bhavet so the abidana turiya the name is only 
with reference to the other three states which themselves are not real they are all only wrongly imagined on oneself so to to give you the correct knowledge it is only a teaching device understand that in fact it is a we call it the in fact any teaching in advaita how to teach this advaita only way is adhyaropa apavada so these are all only adhyaropa even the word fourth is only an adhyaropa to teach you that you are not any of those three but once you have known the other three also as mithya the abhidanam turi also is equally mithya because it is only a teaching device it is only adhyaropa it is deliberately superimposed by the shastra and it will also be given up atma really doesn't have any quality called being fourth or anything in fact it is in and through the other states as i told you already so abhidanam idam tad apeksha bhavet paramatma padasya turiyam iti so the whatever turiya the word which we have assigned to the paramatma the atma paramatma pada acharya says which, which is fine this paramatma that is only with reference to the other three and if the other three are not real then this status of being the fourth also is not is equally unreal so it doesn't really make the atma have some quality called the fourth in fact that's what he will explain in the next verse also let us see that यदपेक्ष भवेदिधानदम परमात्म पदस्य तुरीयमिति तदसत्यमसत्य गुण गुणश्च ततः परिनिर्मित वारण चेष्टितवत ओके बिकॉज़ व्हाई ही हैज टू से दिस इज इन 114 ही सेज दैट द नेम फोर्थ इज विद रेफरेंस टू द अदर थ्री बट द पूर्व पक्षी कैन कम एंड से नो नो इवन देन द फोर्थ इज रियल बिकॉज़ फॉर देम The other three are also equally real, correct? They take the other states of experience as real. So even if you say the abhidana turiya is with reference to the other three, they will say no, no. Then still, still that turiya is real. It may be with reference to the other three, but turiya is real. So we we have to say that the other three are unreal because they come and go. They are not there always. therefore the the status of being the fourth also is equally unreal that's what he says see yad apeksha bhavet abhidanam idam the abhidana turiya which is dependent on the other three states paramatma padasya turiyam iti so the the word turiya which is assigned to the paramatma pada that which is dependent on the other three states that is what tad asatyam it is unreal why asatya gunata guna guna cha tataha that is because it is based on the asatya guna because it is based on the other three states which are all asatya they are all only states of mind mind itself is asatya mind itself is mithya and the, all, the, all the three states are also equally mithya because they are replaced one is replaced by the other that itself shows that they are all changing all the time they are in a flux and therefore they cannot be real whatever is unchanging conscious being alone the invariable in all the experiences alone is the reality whatever varies they are all only mithya they are all only appearances so they are all asatya guna ha because the other three are all asatya the even fourth if even if you call them call it as a guna the state of being the fourth also is equally asatya because the first three are also asatya anyway it is like he gives the analogy also parinirmita varana cheshtitavati he says it is it is like See, if you go to some fair or some exhibition and all that, sometimes they have this elephant. Elephant uh, means they have they have created some elephant. Like some people may be standing inside and all that, and they are creating some movement. It is not real elephant or anything, right? This elephant is not really moving. Or you can even have a wooden elephant, 
with some kind of a some kind of a machine and all that which makes it move it may be even moving its legs and its trunk and all that but it is not real elephant or it is not real movement of the elephant or anything like that this name fourth is only with reference to the other three which themselves are unreal they are all asatyam therefore this abhidana also is equally asatyam only it is only used as a teaching device it is adhyaropa apavada of that is done because even in the mandukya upanishad if you take the atma is shown as not having any of these states correct so nantah pragnyam na bahish pragnyam no bhayata pragnyam na pragnyam na pragnyam like that everything is denied apavada is done is that clear so with that the word turiya also is gone when we do the apavada neti neti correct it is not even if you say the in fact the word atma itself is not required like that there is an argument in the biradarnika bhashya puru bakshi then as is atma word that abhidanam is there what about that then bhashyakara says even that word also is not required so the word atma itself is again only adhyaropa <laughs> it is used to point out your reality <laughs> once you know <laughs> your reality even the word atma also is not required is that clear that is the beauty so it is all pari nirmita varana cheshtita vati means you can make the elephant move for some purpose but it is not real <laughs> it is to teach you something maybe that's all so like that <laughs> this is the avasthatraya viveka and from this again we understand the true nature of ourselves as being this limitless conscious being in whom all these states are just appearances i am the basis i am the self evident self revealing reality in whom all these waking world waker dream world dreamer sleeper everything is appearing i have got nothing to do with any of that i remain as i am always that's my reality i am the satya vastu satyam jnana anantam brahma is myself so this i understand by also analyzing the three states of experience i am the invariable in all the states that's what you have to understand therefore i am satyam the states themselves are mithya because they come and go they are not intrinsic to me this is the teaching this is what one has to understand again we'll continue om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate purnasya purnamadaya purnameva avashishyate om shanti 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 hari hi om shri gurubhyo namaha hari hi om dhanyavad ji dhanyavad thank you